Hi everyone, I'm Bruce Hitchin, and welcome to Center Lane. A while back, we visited Jelly Bean Auto Crafters, where they do some amazing resto mods. One of the vehicles they were working on was a 1959 Willys Wagon. This vehicle is being completely restored and modified to have a modern engine, drivetrain, and suspension, along with a new paint job and interior to make the car look and run like new. We're gonna take a look at the car in a minute, but I thought it would be interesting to find out more about the history of the Willys. Now, if you enjoy watching my channel, then please be sure to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. The company we know today as Jeep has roots that go all the way back to 1908 when John Willys bought the Overland Automotive Division of the Standard Wheel Company and then renamed it Willys Overland Motor Company in 1912. In fact, up until 1918, Willys was one of the largest producers of cars in the U.S., second only to Ford. Over the next few years, Willys acquired a number of other companies, including F.B. Stearns, Electric Auto Light, the Russell Motor Company, Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company, and Duesenberg. While Willys enjoyed years of growth, the company was plagued with labor issues, and then it was hit very hard by the Depression. The bank appointed Walter Chrysler to save the company, and as a result, many of the company's assets were sold. In 1926, Willys Overland introduced a new line of small, low-priced cars named the Whippet. These cars appealed to budget-conscious, recession-weary buyers. In the following years, the company continued to falter until 1940, when the U.S. military issued a tender for a small, general-purpose vehicle. The Army invited manufacturers to bid on production, but Willys, Bantam, and Ford were the only ones to respond, and they all produced prototypes. Bantam's solution was the Model 40 BRC, Ford had the Model GP, short for Government Pygmy, and Willys produced the Willys Quad. Well, Willys eventually won out and was awarded the lucrative contract. By that time, it was called the Willys MA, but it soon became known simply as Jeep. It's thought that the Jeep name came as a result of slurring the letters G and P together to sound like Jeep. Willys Overland ended up building over 368,000 of these vehicles, and Ford built another 277,000 of them under license from Willys. After the war, Willys trademarked the Jeep name and turned it into an off-road utility vehicle by launching the first CJ5. In 1953, the company was sold to Kaiser Motors and became Willys Motors Incorporated and marketed itself as the world's largest maker of four-wheel drive vehicles. In the 50s and 60s, Willys continued to innovate and develop both military and civilian models, creating larger, more comfortable vehicles with improved engines, axles, and transmissions. Models included a cab over truck that came in various configurations, a soft top Jeepster, the Willys Aero Compact Sedan, and the Willys Wagon. In 1963, the company dropped the Willys name in favor of Kaiser Jeep and introduced the Jeep Wagoneer, Gladiator trucks, a fleet van, and a variety of other models. Then in 1970, the company was sold to American Motors. During the 70s, the company introduced many of the models we're familiar with today, including the Jeep Cherokee, Renegade, and the CJ7. In 1987, Chrysler bought AMC, and the Jeep brand continues to thrive today with a line of off-road capable vehicles that combine utility and luxury. As I mentioned earlier, Jelly Bean Auto Crafters has been working on a complete top-to-bottom resto mod of a classic 1959 Willys utility wagon. This vehicle is really the grandfather of today's sport utility vehicles. It's perfect for shuttling around a large family with a ton of gear, and it's combined with great off-road 4x4 capabilities. Ewald Penner is going to tell us about the amazing transformation of this American classic. This is a 1959 Willys. It's a four-wheel drive. Originally would have been a four-cylinder vehicle, uh, four-speed manual transmission. Uh, typically it would be a, 
a family event wagon, you know, with some kids they want to go off-roading, that kind of stuff, maybe their cabin in the woods, that sort of thing. Um, uh, it would also could double up as the work vehicle as well. And so it was really handy for, for people in that generation in the late 50s, early 60s to have something like this. The client's a great client. He's got a, a great vision for the vehicle. Um, modern technology, modern drive, modern reliability, that sort of thing. And uh, what he wanted to have is something that looks stock, with, with the exception of the wheels, and then uh, have something they could take up to into his cabin, just like somebody would have way back in the day. And, uh, but he wanted to have modern power, modern reliability, and uh, modern suspension, that sort of thing, and we've accomplished that all in this truck. When the vehicle came in, it was in really rough shape. There was some dents, some rust. It hadn't been well cared for. It was a four by four after all. Um, I had the vision that the client wanted for it was awesome because it's really nice condition with modern type paint on it, uh, modern wheels and modern drive. There was a considerable amount of uh, metal work needed on the vehicle, a straightening and also patch panels, that sort of thing. And we ended up building a firewall because we went with a 5.7 Hemi. So it's got modern fuel injection, modern reliability, modern power. We made no exterior body modifications, so it's exactly the way it was from factory. Um, uh, it has a five-speed manual transmission. It has air lockers, so you got switches on your dashboard to turn the posies on, that sort of thing. Uh, five-speed manual transmission, aluminum radiator, all that stuff. So the reliability on this vehicle will be will be very good. One of the things we did as well was to get a more comfortable ride. Back then, these springs were really short, and they kind of had a tractor-type ride. Um, uh, but uh, with more of a modern ride, we, were, we chose to put a longer suspension, longer springs into it. So what we did is we ended up lengthening the frame about six inches. That gave us room to put a longer leaf spring into it. That gives us a modern type of a ride. Um, soft, goes over bumps well, yet it still carries a lot of weight. Um, at the same time, by extending the frame forward, it gave us enough room to put a 12,000 pound winch in as well. Um, uh, with the winch on there, if he ever does get stuck, he can get himself unstuck pretty basically. And uh, in doing so, we extended the factory panel. This is a factory panel here, but we extended that out by six inches as well. And we made it look as if it was all still original, along with the bumper, the overriders, and all those sorts of things. Getting a 5.7 Hemi into where a four-cylinder was before is, is not an easy task. We do a lot of engine replacements, that sort of thing, upgrades. Um, this one here was a very small engine bay. As you can see, it's very narrow, it's very short. Um, we had to modify the firewall a little bit because we wanted a better weight distribution to the back. Um, uh, but everything else is extremely tight. We had to plan out and design exactly where everything went, where the power steering reservoir was going to be, where the air filter would be, how the radiator hose were going to go, all those things. Uh, make sure that it was still clear past the booster. Uh, we added that in, clear up past the steering linkages, uh, make sure the exhaust wouldn't rattle on the frame, all the clearances would be there, and at the same time make sure there's enough airflow through that the engine gonna, isn't going to retain the heat in the engine bay. It has to be able to flow through just like a, just like a regular car, not overheat. The, the factory wheelies, it has a very basic, basic dashboard, basic interior, um, because they're a basic truck. Um, uh, with this client wanting a more high-end, more modern type of a vehicle, uh, we took some artistic liberties and some design changes that still are in keeping with what Willys had originally. Um, for example, this here is factory, this is all stock, with the exception of the panel. This here is all stock, so this is all original up to here. But the speedometer was here and it went back down again, so you had the same type of indent as you have here, but on this side as well. So it went out, went back in again. The trouble with that is now you got the speedometer here, um, there's not enough room for gauges. Um, so we ended up making the dashboard a little bigger, keeping it flat. With us being such a special vehicle, it, it's kind of like a bespoke suit. So what we did is we had the client come and sit in the seat. Um, he showed us exactly where he wanted the pedals. So these pedals were exactly where he needs them for his feet, uh, were exactly where he wanted the shifter to be, uh, the park brake, the steering wheel, all these things are exactly where the client needs. Once this was done, we then laid out where the, where the gauges should be. He came back in again and sat in the seat and looked at it, so now he can see through the steering wheel, he can see all the gauges totally clear. Um, there's no interruption in there. So if he's driving and he can glance down, all the gauges are, are totally visible for him. Um, to make it look a little nicer, to spruce it up a little bit, it looked a little bland to have this all flat. So we ended up putting, building a panel along here. Um, this is a custom panel, but it looks like it's something that could have come in a 59 Willys. And we put all the numbers in here. This is for the audio, so when he wants to turn the stereo on, it operates off of his, off his phone. Um, uh, you got all the controls right there, your heaters, all that kind of stuff. And we use knobs on here that are in keeping with the style of the vehicle as well. Uh, these little little ribs in here mimic what was on the outs of the body, these ribs on the outs of the body. So we have those in here as well to kind of bring the interior and the exterior together. And uh, we put a couple of grooves at the bottom and one at the top, just to kind of break it up a bit more. And we put the body color into there as well. So it looks as if it's all an original piece. And if somebody didn't know any better, this would be 
to them would be 100% factory. Um, and just for a bit of comfort, we put tilt steering in as well, so this goes up and down. So uh, if he's on a long trip, he wants to change that, um, or if somebody else wants to drive it sort of a thing, um, it can be adjusted for them as well. Originally, this seat would have been would have been two seats. There was a smaller seat on the driver's side, and then the, uh, the rest of it was on the passenger side. So you could fit two small people on the, on the passenger and one small person on the, on the driver's side. I'm uh, not sure why they made that configuration because the front seat was actually opposite of that, but uh, I'm sure they had their reasons. What we ended up doing was putting a full back on it and a full bottom as well. Um, it gives it a cleaner look and it's actually more comfortable. Um, the way we did put the foam in there, um, uh, when you sit back and it actually hugs around you just like a bucket seat does, but it's still a bench seat. And uh, so it's really comfortable. We also put uh, lap belts as well. Um, this way, if you ever are in an accident, you're being retained a whole lot better than it would be in Westport Factory. One unique thing about this vehicle is the, the way that the tailgate is held from going down too far. Typically, you'll have a chain, a strap, and that sort of thing. But what Willie's decided to do was have these metal brackets that are kind of, kind of two bars put together. So as you move it up and down, they automatically fold down and they're out of your way. You don't get the, uh, you don't get the rattling and the, the clanging of the chain. So it's a much quieter system. The license plate bracket is, a, is an interesting piece. Uh, when you're driving along, typically your, your license plate is here, your light is shining on it. As you put the tailgate down, this automatically comes down like this here. So if, if you want to see that, you'll see it goes down. Originally this truck didn't have any carpet in the back. It was more basic. So the floor in the back here was very similar to the tailgate, how it goes up and down this is when you're putting material on it, um, you're only resting on the upper portions. Being more of a luxury model, like a modern SUV, uh, we put carpet on it and uh, we put wood strips on it. The wood strips themselves are identical to the factory. They've been restored just like the factory ones were. And uh, they actually carry on just like the factory ones did as well, but on top of the carpet. This way you have the, the, the look of the carpet, the sound deadening of it, the warmth of the carpet, but you don't have the, gar you don't, you don't have the, the rattle of the, of the metal. And we also added an extra rib on the side just to give it a bit better look. And uh, by the differential, we have a little different configuration there as well just to give it a more of a modern look as well. Well, that's a look at how this mid-century classic is being brought back to its former glory and opening a new chapter in the life of this important American icon. Thanks to Ewald Penner for showing us the car and everyone at Jellybean for your commitment to excellence. Until next week, Thanks for watching.